little while ago I released a video where I tried to convince you that the photos don't really matter in landscape photography and I stand by that sentiment but there are a couple of very specific reasons why and I know I covered them to a large extent in that video but <clears throat> I want to address sort of an adjunct issue to that which kind of occurred to me today. It's difficult sometimes when you've been shooting for, well when you've been doing anything for a long time it's difficult to imagine what it's like to be a beginner with all the frustrations and letdowns and disappointments and all the disillusionment that comes with that. It's easy to forget that. And the thought occurred to me, can you actually enjoy outdoor landscape photography if you're crap at it, if you're no good at it? And I think the answer is yes. But like almost everything in life, it is dependent upon your mindset and how you approach things. I've touched on the value of being outside and using photography as an excuse to do it. And I've done that. I've touched on that subject many times. And I think this fits in very nicely to this idea that yes, you can enjoy your landscape photography, even if you're rubbish at it. And the reason is, if you appreciate the value of being outside when most of us spend 23 hours out of 24 indoors, if you feel good after you've been out for a walk amongst nature and you've got the fresh air in your lungs and you know your muscles have moved a bit, if you get enjoyment from that, then you don't need much convincing. This doesn't, of course, address the frustrations that might come from being terrible at taking landscape photos and having the frustration of that overpowering any pleasure you get from going outside. It's a bit like saying that the most important thing in life is just simply to enjoy your life, but you're piss poor, you're broke as hell. After a while, the fact that you're broke tends to dominate your daily thinking. It's a bit like an old mate of mine that I worked with years ago. <laughs> his, um, his girlfriend said to him, all you ever think about is sex. And he said, well, you know, that's like somebody who's suffocating. All they can think about is getting oxygen. And I think it's, <laughs> that principle carries through in a lot of things. Um, if you're constantly frustrated by your photography and your lack of improvement, then yeah, it might be really difficult to continue to get pleasure from it because the frustration just overwhelms the rest of it. So here's what I recommend you do. For a start, stop looking at other people's photos on Instagram, on Flickr, and yes, on YouTube. If you find, and I've experienced this before with other things, if you find that looking at high quality work of other people, whether they are speakers, authors, bloggers, podcasters, uh, YouTubers, photographers, whatever, if looking at other people's work fills you with a sense of anxiety or stress or frustration, then that's the thing you need to stop doing because it's clearly not helping. And I've had to do this a number of times with different things to just completely turn off all the inputs and focus purely on my output. By turning off all the inputs, you start to uh, dilute this whole FOMO issue, this whole, not FOMO, this whole envy issue, this whole comparison game, which almost inevitably is a huge waste of time and a great source of frustration. I know people who are very, very successful in business and in, the, in various creative spheres who do not study other people's work, who do not read other people's writings, who don't look at other people's photos. They just purely create from their own honest and authentic perspective on things. And ironically, well, perhaps not, their work resonates with a lot of people because it's clear that their work is theirs. <clears throat> it doesn't carry influence from others that people can identify. So this is a long-winded way of me saying, if you're getting frustrated by your lack of improvement with your landscape photography, first thing to do is stop looking at everybody else's. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Don't go outside. Next tip is to don't go out with the intention of getting a photo. 
there is a lot to be said for lowering your expectations in a lot of things in life. You know, I've been a super ambitious go-getter for most of my life, but in recent times, I've learned the value of actually setting expectations very low because it takes the pressure off, it eliminates the anxiety and the stress and the frustration so that you can actually become better. If you're constantly pressuring yourself to get better and comparing yourself to other people in that process, you cannot get better. Yes, maybe you can when you're you know, 20 and young, dumb and full of hormones because you have endless energy and you know you have an endless, seemingly endless amount of time to improve. But when you get older, when you're sort of my age, I'm 53, well then that doesn't, you don't have that fire in the belly anymore. And it's very easy to get frustrated by something and say, I don't need this, stuff it. I'll go and play golf instead. I'll go and learn something else. Maybe I'll get into model trains or something, you know? Um, so I think these are the two things. I, I know everybody likes to give you five tips or seven tips or whatever, but really these are the two things that I, I think you should really focus on is stop with the inputs. Um, you know, stop watching my videos if that helps. Stop watching anybody's videos. Stop looking at other people's photos. Just get outside and create stuff that you're happy with, that makes you happy. And, you know, try little things at a time. Don't try to create epic photos. Try to enjoy the process of potentially taking a photo. And, you know, the second thing fits in with that nicely is don't go out there with the intention of getting photos. Go out there with the intention of just going out, of just wandering. And, you know, don't worry about um, wasting shots. We shoot digital now. You can take a thousand photos of a tree from three angles if you want. No one cares. If that's something that you feel like you want to do, then just do that, you know. Um, and in doing this, I think you can enjoy your landscape photography a whole lot more because the two things that cause the greatest pressure, I think, comparing yourself to other people, all those inputs, and going out with the intention of taking a photo, you eliminate those two things, you can enjoy it again. Anyway, that was a lot more than three minutes, I apologize. Um, thanks for hanging out with me again. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.